<laughs> that? I forget to turn mine back on. Yeah, That's me a... too. I missed a call in the morning because of exactly that. I came out of the band concert the night before. Yep. I forgot to turn the ringer back on. There you go. Oh, you like me. <laughs> and when you're trying to make a call in the car, and your car says no phone connected. I'm like, what's up? Oh, I don't have a phone with me. <laughs> How dare you? Oh. That's you know, the car is trying to tell me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Exciting night. We're so glad to see everybody here. So welcome to the Beaver Creek Board of Education's meeting for June, no oh, June, it's May, sorry, 18th. Would you all please, um, would you please call the roll? Dr. Fisher? Here. Mrs. Hunt is absent. Mrs. Regano? Here. Mr. Taylor? Here. And Mr. Stein? Here. Would you all please stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a motion and a second to approve the agenda as presented. So moved. Second. Let's call the vote. Mr. Stein? Yes. Dr. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Regano? Yes. And Mr. Taylor. Yes. Thank you. And we're into the most exciting part of the night. So here we go. Uh, yes. Uh, May is always a very exciting night. Uh, we have uh, three presentations this evening. And the uh, first one is our school spotlight. And I believe that our school spotlight may cause everybody to get a little movement in their feet. So I'm going to introduce our preschool principal, Christine Montague, and have Christine come up. should be right there. Yep. Hi, I'm Christy Monty. I'm the principal um, at the preschool center, just on the back side of this building. Um, and as you may have seen, we have some preschoolers outside. And so I'm going to share a little bit about our fundraiser and what we do at the preschool center. Um, and then it just so happened that Mrs. Morgano came to our fundraiser and really wanted us to bring it to all of you tonight for us to participate. <laughs> All right. Thank you. So at the preschool center, we do a dance a thon. Um, for those of you who don't know about our preschool center, um, we exist because of students that have disabilities and making sure that we educate our youngest kids starting at age three. And so half of our population are students that have an IEP and then half of our population are typically developing peers in those classrooms. So when we are thinking about what kind of fundraiser to do, this was about four years ago, um, we considered everything that everybody else does. Fun runs, um, different ways to raise money, um, you know, cookie sales, flower sales, all of that. But we really wanted something that every single one of our students could enjoy and participate in. And so we came up with um, a dance fun. So every year our staff picks a theme. Um, each classroom picks a theme, I should say. So, and then all the kids dress up to go with the theme of their classroom. Um, one of the reasons we pick dancing is because it makes people feel socially connected. You feel connected to people when you're enjoying um, music with them, and we want our kids to feel connected to each other and connected to us. It allows them to work on motor development. So at preschool, we really work on fine motor, we work on gross motor, it's part of our standards that we do with students. And so um, our physical therapist, Mr. Nick, and our occupational therapist, Nicole Moline, actually run our dance in the gym. And so kids' uh, classes rotate in and out of the gym on a schedule so that they can all participate during that time. And dancing is good for mental health and helps reduce stress. 
Um, it is a great time the whole day. Every 15 minutes, we stop, drop, and dance. And music plays over the intercom. Um, and then in the gym, it's playing the continuous 25, 30 minutes the students are in there. And dancing is inclusive. Every single child can participate in some manner um, in the dancing, whether that's with a teacher, with a peer, moving their arms or moving their legs, or just enjoying the sound of the music. Um, and it's a way that kids connect to people around them. So for us, we thought that that was really important for our preschool, and it's been such a wonderful thing ever since. Uh, two years ago, we made it a family event. So the day of the dance is all school day, and then the evening is a family dance -a And so we invite families into the preschool. They have access to the playgrounds. Um, Bucky Beaver is there. This year we had a tattoo station. We had food. Um, and it was just a time for the community of our preschool to come in to the center and enjoy um, meeting each other and dancing. I did want to give a special shout out to Pizza Dive. Um, our pizza food truck canceled at the last minute, within 45 minutes of them arriving. And uh, I posted on our Facebook page, hey, parents, just FYI, pizza truck's not gonna make it, due to an emergency. So um, the pizza guy family used to come to our preschool, so she saw that, called me, and said, how many pizzas can I bring you? And they're all free. Um, so wow. I just wanted to give them a shout out because I thought that was really awesome. So um, I'm gonna go out there and I would like to invite everyone to follow us because we are going to have a five minute anthem out in the lobby with all of the preschoolers. So let's go, people. We're all dancing. <laughs> Everybody looks very comfortable about this. I know, right? <laughs>
I'm sure you're saying you gotta be kidding me. I was gonna go there to dance tonight. You never know what's gonna happen here. <laughs> We're so happy you're all here, and we have even more exciting things happening tonight. Yeah, so our next group is the uh, J. Rotsy drill team. So we're all gonna go outside and they're gonna teach us how to do this. <laughs> 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 We're gonna climb ropes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I wanna introduce uh, Major Whitlow and have him come up. Uh, every group that makes it through the state competition and excels and wins, uh, our board over the last probably four years has recognized those individuals. And um, not only do we have a state championship, but we also have a national championship. So I'll turn it over uh, to Major Whitlow. Awesome. Well, good evening, everyone. Um, just want to say, first off, thanks to the board uh, inviting us out. Uh, huge honor on behalf of the program. Uh, and specifically on behalf of our drill team. Uh, just to kind of put it in perspective, when you watch drill, I think everyone's seen it in a movie or you've seen, uh, maybe had the privilege of going to a, a graduation on, you know, for a family member or loved one. Um, it is inherent what military does. Uh, it instills discipline, it instills pride, uh, it instills teamwork, and uh, you can liken it to a cake. Uh, everybody's capable of baking a cake but only the professionals can do it at the level that, uh, that our team has done this year. And I just kind of want to give a shout out to them that uh, it looks good when it all comes together. Uh, similar to football or marching band, we put in hundreds of hours of practice to make it look good on the court uh, each Saturday. And uh, here in the state of Ohio, there are 24 Air Force Junior ROTC programs, uh, and we were crowned state champions this year. So huge shout out to our team. <laughs> Uh, those competitions involve things such as color guard, presenting the flag uh, in a proper, uh, in a customs and courteous and professional way, uh, inspection, which is an evaluation of their uniforms and junior ROTC knowledge, their composure uh, under pressure. Uh, there's some arm drill, which they actually use the, uh, the rifles, which are, are not real, but uh, they feel that way. Nine pound rifles, mm -hmm. uh, they march and pr uh, precision. Uh, and if they want to take it a step further, they actually do, uh, take it a step further and perform exhibition where they get a chance to toss those rifles around and things of that nature. And then unarmed exhibition, the kids get out there and kind of liken it to Air Force cheerleading. A little bit of drill, uh, incorporating a little bit of dance. Not what we just saw out in the hallway there, but uh, something along those lines. So again, our team was crowned state champions this year. Super impressed with them. Uh, this is kind of a follow-up we wanted in 2019, 2020 during those COVID years. But uh, certainly did not get to, to make it here for recognition. Uh, and then most recently our team was, our arm team was crowned tops in the Air Force. During Air Force Nationals there were approximately 25 teams that came from all over the world, Germany, Texas, Ohio, uh, you name it. They came out to compete at the Nutter Center. Our arm team was crowned number one of 20. And then our unarmed team, uh, equally as impressive, they were number three of about 25 teams or so as well. So, man, we get after it. Our kids are your kiddos are, are awesome at what they do. And I'm just fortunate that they let me play a small part in it as the coach. So I uh, want to uh, tell you guys congratulations again. And this is just a great way to kind of just cap off the season. And uh, we just look forward to what's, uh, what lies ahead. So, Mr. <laughs> So with every group that wins the state championship, we always want to give them something. So we do have a gift for all the students. Um, but before we go there, I'd like to introduce two special guests. We have uh, St uh, State Senator Bob Hackett with us tonight. So I'll have Bob come up and State Rep Brian Lampton have them both come up. They'd like to say something as well. Yeah, if, if people don't realize, you know, this is not just state champion, it's national champion. 
You know, I was a good high school football player, captain of an undefeated team. You cannot believe how hard it is. I can't even remember Ohio really having a national champion football team, you know, in, in, at the high school level. So, Major, you're doing a super, super job, and we can't, we can't thank you enough. So, a lot of times what we'll do, we'll have, we have them come over, and we offered them, but it's so hard to get the kids to come over. So, what we have for the kids, and we'll give them to the Major, we have a, a proclamation or accommodation for each kid. So, each, each young man and woman can, will have a little from the Senate, and I know Brian's going to talk. He has one from the, from the House. But in addition, we have a resolution, and this resolution goes in the Ohio Revised Code. So, I mean, it'll always be in Ohio's history that they were national champions. I mean, it is, I mean they really spend the time to, to write up, whereas it is really neat all the different things that they say. And they know. I mean, they really do their investigation at the state level to make sure that they don't miss. And, of course, uh, the major said everything is... It can be said, but fantastic. We are just thrilled to be here and, you know, thank, thank the kids at all. I mean, this is national champion. It's unbelievable. Thank you. I first saw it on Facebook and I thought, am I reading this right? And I, I sent you a confirmation. He goes, you read it right. National championships. Congratulations, students. That's just phenomenal in four years or five years you've been five years this group hasn't been around 20 years or 30 five years short five short years and you're not just state champions you're national champions this is a, a, a proud moment for me I'm just so tickled that I'm a Beaver Creek resident uh, and a huge fan I, you know I don't know if you some of you kids may know I announced football and basketball for Beaver Creek varsity and I always love it when you when you present the colors uh, just so proud of your of your team and your accomplishments, uh, Coach or Major. Congratulations on a wonderful season. Uh, and and like Senator Hackett said, it is now ingrained in the in the uh, House of Representatives for eternity. So what happens is when it when it comes to this level, the whole House votes on it. Right. So it is recorded, voted, approved, and and uh, and and basically uh, in the. Uh, uh, Records of Ohio, the Ohio House for forever. So congratulations.
right, and that brings us to our final presentation. And this is always an exciting presentation, but it's very sad for the board, very sad for the school district, because we see people out there that have committed so much of their life and time to our district. And they are very, very happy. <laughs> and uh, uh, their impact has been great on us. So now we'd like to turn it over to Mr. Schwederman to recognize uh, our staff that are retiring. Thank you very much, Mr. Otten, Board of Education, Mrs. Ketzmiller. Um, it is that time of year when we are transitioning and we are saying goodbye to some of our teachers and our staff who support the work that we do with our students. And as you can see with the presentations that we had just before, our students really shine. And it's through the efforts and support of the staff uh, and the parents to support our students and our community that allow our teachers and staff members to really help each and every one of our students learn and grow. And tonight we have six individuals who have uh, announced their resignation for the purpose of retirement and will be leaving Beaver Creek City Schools at the end of uh, the school year and just I'm not counting, but maybe they are. Uh, just a few short days before uh, they will have worked their last uh, day with Beaver Creek City Schools. So at this time, I'd like to ask those six individuals, they know who they are, to come forward and just stand right here for a moment. Yeah. Ladies, when the Board of Education accepted your resignation for the purpose of retirement, uh, as you establish that retirement with your respective retirement system. Um, in doing so, when they accept that and they vote on it, they actually adopt a resolution. And much like um, Senator Tackett and Representative Lampton said, uh, when, a, when a governing body uh, adopts a resolution, it lives forever uh, in the records of the school district. And that's why it's important for us to recognize you this evening. Um, and I'd like to read that uh, resolution. Now, I'm not reading six different resolutions. I'm kind of incorporating it together. Um, but this is the resolution that our board has adopted uh, in your recognition. At the meeting of the Beaver Creek Board of Education held May 18th, 2023, the following resolution is adopted. Whereas the Beaver Creek Board of Education has received notification of retirement of Sonia Vetta, Cheryl Soteriano, Amy Harshbarger, Kelly Bianco, Karen Wilson, and Paula Thomas. And whereas the Board of Education wishes to publicly recognize and commend these fine ladies for their outstanding contribution during their combined 135 years of service to Beaver Creek City Schools. And whereas through their efforts, the quality and support rendered to the district students staff and administration and the performance of the school's mission has been greatly enhanced. And whereas Mrs. Vetta, Mrs. Soteriano, Ms. Harshbarger, Ms. Bianco, uh, Mrs. Wilson, and Mrs. Thomas leave an outstanding professional and personal record which will serve as an exemplary model for the rest of us to follow that whereas their presence, influence, and contribution have helped to make our schools a better place. Therefore, be it resolved that the Beaver Creek Board of Education does hereby accept, with regret, the retirement resignation of Sonia Vetta, Cheryl Soteriano, Amy Harshbarger, Kelly Bianco, Karen Wilson, and Paula Thomas, and does publicly express its sincere appreciation for their outstanding career in our schools and with and wishes each of you health, happiness, and a long, active, and contented retirement. Congratulations, ladies. At this time, at this time, I'd like to ask Sonia to stay and the rest of you can have a seat, but we'll call you back up in a few short moments. And I would like to invite Mrs. Bamford, Principal of Parkwood Elementary School, up with a few words for Mrs. Bamford. Oh, great. Thank you. Well, where do we begin, Sonia? She has, um, she's an amazing educator, and I've known you for eight years, and every time I walk into your room, I learn something new and I'm amazed at what you teach our kids. 
and you are going to be greatly missed. She has been um, in, in elementary. She, she started in 1987 in Pennsylvania, and she taught first and second grade in, in a classroom in Pennsylvania, and then she decided that she wanted to take some time off to raise her two daughters. And at that time, she was exploring museums, leading Girl Scout troops, and volunteering at their, at their schools. And once they were older, she did some substitute teaching, and she worked at Clark State teaching developmental reading and worked for Beaver Creek Schools part-time as a substitute or as a gifted uh, services, testing kids for gifted services. She ended up joining Beaver Creek in 2010 um, and as a full-time teacher, as a gifted intervention specialist. And with the exception of a few years in a third and fourth grade classroom, that's what she's done here ever since she came here full-time. She has two daughters who are now grown, and she has, uh, they have daughters of their own, so she's a grandma, and uh, I, I believe they call you Super Nanny, or Summer Nanny, Summer, summer Nanny, nanny. Same, Summer Nana, and she, all the time, so yeah, <laughs> so her and Lou and her two golden doodles who um, live in the house together, and they keep busy with each other, and they love to golf and explore new places. She is actually has plans to go golfing in Scotland, this, hopefully this summer, and uh, when she retires. She loves making things and plans on making a lot of crafts and projects that have been on the back burner for quite some time. She plans on volunteering in her spare time, and our third graders, they go to Warninger, Warninger Park every year, and she plans on seeing them there. She's going to volunteer at Warninger Park and also at Carillon Park. Our fourth graders go there every year, so she's not going to be too far from the students um, that she has been with for quite some time. So um, she is actually learning Italian right now because she's going on an Italian um, vacation here soon. So she's looking forward to that. And uh, working in Beaver Creek has been a very fulfilling experience for her, and she knows she'll miss it, and we will miss you too. And a lot of, uh, I've, I've asked a lot of staff about um, Sonia and a lot of the work, the, the things that how she's, ex um, they talk about her as being caring, genuine, dependable, knowledgeable. And if we ever need an answer to anything, you're always the one that we went to. Um, you will be missed and, and I wish you luck and congratulations. And uh, I know that your granddaughters, they have made plans for you already. You're going to be doing zoo, zoo visits, uh, going to playgrounds, and going to museums. And now she can be the summer nanny all the time. So congratulations. told that I wasn't supposed to spill any secrets, so I'll <laughs> stick with it. <laughs> Just a few. Just kidding. Um, so, <laughs> let's see. Cheryl, one of our, my most first memories of with Cheryl was seeing her class math discussions, which was more like a conversation with her students. Um, they didn't realize they were learning at the time, but they were. I love that um, she always modeled her thinking and um, made the math mistakes, mistakes, and the students felt proud to fix them. And she did, she did this because she was trying to build their math self-esteem. You know, lots of 
Lots of fourth graders. <laughs> you always said that every time I came in. Lots of fourth graders think that math is so hard, and uh, once they get to fix the teacher's mistakes, it makes it easier for them. So you've done a great job with that. Um, they're always engaged in their learning. You had activities and competitions, maybe with Mrs. Tillman, that might have gone a little too far. No, I'm just kidding. They did not. They were fine. <laughs> she did uh, lots of learning activities and stations and kept her kids very engaged in learning. Um, but really, what really stood out to me in Cheryl's, my years of knowing Cheryl, is um, building her, her building relationships with all of her students. She um, realizes that lots of students come from lots of different backgrounds with some trauma and things that they cannot overcome, and she has no control over. But what she can do is meet them at the door and meet them where they are and grow them from there. And she does a wonderful job of getting to know every single student that comes through her door. And every, every year she would say to me, oh boy, this group. And then at the end of the year, I just love them. They can't move on every year. And um, that just shows how much she cares about all of her students every single day. Let's see, um, I was trying to, I wrote down some things and I was like, oh my goodness. She, de she never hesitated to reach out to parents and um, slyly give them some parental advice. Uh, we did a great job of that. They didn't realize, again, they didn't realize they were getting their parental advice, but when they did what you suggested, it worked out really well. So, um, let's see. She is the one in our school that no parent, the name that no parent can ever pronounce. It's always Mrs. Satterino, I think. Mrs. Satteriano, mm -hmm, when you say whose class is your child in. Um, let's see, and so many teachers often, you know, you get to the end of your career and um, 35 years is a long time to be teaching and sometimes they'll coast to the end, but Cheryl's right there every single day, um, every single day, and she's with her kids. You may not realize the impact you're having on the kids today and then the kids in the future, but you are sharing your kindness and your heart with them every single day. Not just your math lessons or your science lessons, but your heart. Um, to Cheryl's family, thank you so much for sharing her with the students of Shaw over the past 35 years. We truly appreciate her and her time um, that she's given to Shaw. Um, and you, Cheryl, you have a, made a lasting impression on the students of Beaver Creek. Um, oh, I forgot to say one more thing. I have a tendency to try to make things fun, and I go into classrooms and I try to, boom, get the teacher when their back is turned to me. And I walk in and um, I do it to many, many, many teachers. I've never been able to scare this lady. So, Cheryl, you will retire as the queen of the boo game, and you'll, you've never been scared. So, anyway, thank you for your service. Congratulations on all years, and we will truly miss you. So. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Well, what can I say? Uh, this is one of the most difficult retirement recognitions that I will have to do. Paula Thomas is one of the best ladies that I've ever worked with. She's a self-starter, very reliable, honest, and a very caring person. If I ever want a job done and to be done quickly, 100% Paula is my go-to. Paula started working for our department when I was a dispatcher. Paula's been with Beaver Creek Schools about 13 years now. I quickly realized that she was a keeper. I really hate to see her go, but of course I'm happy for her and I wish her nothing but the best. Paul and I have both walked down some very difficult roads over the past few years. We found a way to close the door in the middle of a crazy busy day and pray and shed a few tears. So much of life is out of our control, but we have some very but we have seen some very big, vic and big and small victories as we wake up each day putting our best foot forward. Speaking of difficult roads, I will tell you, not even a difficult road has stopped Paula Thomas. She showed up for work even when I'm sure she didn't feel like it. You can pretend to care, but you cannot pretend to show up. That is because Paula does care. She cares for the role that she plays each day in helping to get each child to and from school safely. 
she showed up. I cannot thank you enough, Paula, for showing up, even on those difficult days. You inspire me in more ways than you will ever know. Now it's your turn to pray, pray without me. Pray that we can function without you. <laughs> with all that being said, I, w I want you to blow out of here in that convertible with it to the floor and enjoy yourself. Keep Don in line. And of course, enjoy each other. Paula also has three children and three amazing grandchildren that she will enjoy. That is what it's all about. You have worked hard to raise your children. Now go and enjoy your family and life with no alarm clock and no day-to-day -day that is centered around time. We work in transportation, if I didn't introduce myself. <laughs> She's the uh, building office assistant at transportation. So school time, that is. We will miss you dearly, Paula, but it's now your turn. May God bless you, Paula, and be with you as you enjoy the next journey that awaits you. Congratulations, Paula. made it very clear that she is not talking tonight. I have three lovely ladies to introduce you to tonight. Um, I'm not going to look at them because I'm already going. Um, I asked you for a box of tissues too. Where? Come on. Yeah, right. Serious. So, thank you. I really might need them. Um, the first lovely lady that I would like to talk about is Kelly Bianco. So, Kelly, would you come up here? I'd like to celebrate the retirement of an outstanding English teacher who has been an integral part of our school community for many years. Kelly Bianco has been a beloved teacher and friend to many of us, and it's with mixed emotions that we bid her farewell as she begins a new chapter in her life. Throughout her time here, Kelly has been more than just a teacher. She's become a mentor, a role model, and a friend to countless students, providing guidance, support, and inspiration in all areas of life. Her unique blend of humor, intelligence, and compassion, she has earned the love and respect of students and staff alike. One of the things that makes Kelly such a spe special teacher is her ability to connect with students on a personal level. She's always willing to go the extra mile to make sure that students felt supported and cared for, both in and outside of the classroom. Whether it was staying late to help with a project or taking time to chat with students in the hallway, Kelly made sure that everyone felt seen and valued. Kelly's care and concern for her students lasts a lifetime. If you've ever spent any time with Kelly outside of the school setting, be prepared to have at least a few conversations with former students who will approach her. Her genuine love for them and interest in their current pursuits shines in these interactions. Another thing that made Kelly stand out was her support for athletics. As a former athlete herself, she understood the importance of sports in shaping young minds and building strong bodies. She's always there to cheer on our teams, offer words of encouragement, and lend a helping hand when needed. But perhaps what makes Kelly most special was her ability to make English class fun and engaging. With her quick wit, infectious energy, and unorthodox teaching methods, she made even the most reluctant students eager to participate. Whether it was through creative writing assignments, projects, or lively classroom discussions, Kelly made learning fun. As Kelly begins this new chapter in her life, we want to express our heartfelt gratitude for everything that she's done for our school community. Her passion for teaching, love of students, and dedication to athletics will be remembered and cherished. She's truly left a lasting impact on the lives of so many, and we wish her all the best in this new phase of her journey. On behalf of all of the FH staff, I want to say thank you, Kelly, for all that you've done for our school. You're truly an inspiration to all of us and we are honored to have had the privilege of knowing you. Congrats on a well-deserved retirement, and may this next chapter of your life be filled with joy, peace, and all the things that you love. And 
alphabetical order. Next up would be Amy Harshbarger. Amy, would you come up and join me, please? There's tissues right here, we can share them. <laughs> Today is a bittersweet moment for our school community as we gather to celebrate the retirement of our esteemed physical education and health teacher, Amy Harshbarger. After many years of dedicated service, Amy has decided to retire, leaving behind a legacy of excellence and a profound impact on the lives of students and colleagues. Amy's been an integral figure, or instrumental figure in our school community, inspiring us all to adopt healthy lifestyles, develop fitness routines, and take responsibility for our physical and mental health. Through engaging lessons, rigorous exercise, and innovative teaching methods, Amy has encouraged us to break out of our comfort zones, challenge ourselves, and push the limits of what we thought was not possible. But Amy's contributions to our school community go beyond the classroom. Amy has been a caring and compassionate mentor to countless students, offering support, guidance, and encouragement whenever it was needed. Students remember her kindness and support long after they leave her classroom. In more recent years, many parents have returned to our building with children of their own, always excited to see Ms. Hartschbarger and have their children experience her as a teacher also. She's been an integral part of our school's athletic programs, training and coaching several teams and helping them achieve greatness on the field, court, or on the track. Amy's always been an active member of our school's faculty, contributing to various committees, acting as a department chair, and collaborating with other teachers to enhance our school's curriculum and culture. As we celebrate Amy's retirement, we're grateful for the profound impact that she's had on our school community her passion for teaching, commitment to student success, and unwavering dedication to our school's mission will be deeply missed. On behalf of all Ferguson Hall students and staff, I want to express our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for everything Amy has done for our school community. Her legacy will continue to inspire us and we wish her all the best in the next chapter of her life. Thank you, Amy, for being an outstanding teacher, mentor, and friend. Your impact on our lives will be felt for years to come. <laughs> I almost made it through that one, if anybody noticed, by the way. Karen Wilson, would you come up and join me, please? It is with mixed emotions that I speak to celebrate the retirement of our beloved English teacher, Karen Wilson. After many years of dedicated service to our school community, Karen has decided to retire leaving a lasting impact on the lives of countless students and colleagues. Throughout her tenure at our school, Karen has been an exemplary teacher, instilling in us a love of literature, language, and critical thinking. Through her lessons, insightful feedback, and thoughtful discussions, Karen has challenged us to expand our minds and broaden our perspectives. Karen's not only taught us the mechanics of English language, but also provided us with the necessary tools to express ourselves effectively and creatively. Her passion for teaching has inspired students to read widely, write eloquently, and communicate confidently. But Karen's contributions to our school community go beyond the classroom. She's been a caring and compassionate mentor to countless students, offering support, guidance, and encouragement whenever it was needed. Her unwavering, de unwavering dedication to our school's mission, culture, and values has made a profound impact on the lives, on our lives, and set an example for all of us to follow. She truly has a heart of gold. As we celebrate Karen's retirement, we're grateful for the profound impact that she's had on our school community, her commitment to student success, tireless effort, and unwavering dedication to teaching will be de deeply missed. On behalf of all the FH staff, I want to express our heartfelt gratitude and appreciation for everything Karen has done for our school community. 
Her legacy will continue to inspire us and we wish her all the best in the next chapter of her life. Thank you, Karen, for being a loving teacher, mentor, and friend. Your impact on our lives will be felt for years to come. I feel like my head is ready, but my heart isn't quite there yet. I, had, I, I have had such a wonderful, positive experience. Um, I come from a military family, and at Beaver Creek, when we moved here from the Netherlands, this was the first school where I didn't have to teach for a couple years and then moved to another uh, Air Force base. I was able to teach uh, siblings. I was able to see those siblings come back and, and visit when it was senior time or when they just wanted to stop by and say hi. And I had, in all my years of teaching, I had never had that experience. I had never had colleagues before that I had the time to develop friendships and uh, rapport with and my department is actually such a blessing has been such a blessing over these 19 years um, the staff at school the librarian um, my inclusion teacher I, I can't not talk without mentioning Rob we have gotten to the point in our teaching relationship that if a student says something Rob and I can very briefly exchange a look and we know what the other one is thinking so <laughs> that has been a positive experience I also want to say I know every teacher believes that he or she has the best students but year after year after year after year I know I have had the very best students and and they really are I'm not just saying that because I love them I'm saying that because it's true I'd um, like to thank my department chairman, Nina Shanahan, um, the teachers, the administrators who have supported me, especially um, this year, which we know has, has, been, has had its challenges. Um, you, you have been there for me throughout our, my teaching experience, but especially this year, you supported me in, in ways that I loved that helped me through a tough time. So to all of you, thank you for that. Thank you for listening to me. <laughs> Thank you all for coming tonight, and thank you for all you have done for our schools. We will miss you, but remember, you're always part of our family. Thank you. to questions or comments from the public and we do have one speaker tonight and that's Ara Beal if you would just please come up please um, thank you for coming tonight um, you have three minutes 
I will, and I'm going okay, to well, timer on my phone. Well, okay. <laughs> you are good. I'm um, following the rules. We need you to um, state your name yeah. and address, and should your comments require an answer, somebody will get back to you. Excellent. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. I'm Ara Beal. I have two sophomores at the high school. Um, I am also a theater professional and educator, and I am here tonight to share my concerns about the safety within our high school theater program. Um, so both of my boys were involved in Footloose. Both of them said things uh, when they were home from rehearsal that concerned me. And then I saw the performance its first weekend. During the beginning of the performance, I noticed that there were set pieces that were flying via the counterweight system that were not properly rigged, and I started to get extra concerned. Then, a student drove a running motorcycle on stage. Not only was a full weight running vehicle driven indoors by a student, he then turned the motorcycle and drove straight towards the orchestra pit, which was filled with students, and towards the audience. I was in shock. I have seen and facilitated hundreds of educational theater productions, and this was the most flagrant disregard of safety of students and audiences I have ever seen. Uh, I had to reconsider everything I had seen and heard regarding the safety of the program. I reached out to Principal Wren via email that night, and he did ensure that the motorcycle was not driven or turned on during the final two performances. While that particularly ignorant and irresponsible choice was addressed, there are other issues that remain. First, faculty, staff, and attitude. The faculty mocked my concerns openly to students when they told the kids the motorcycle was not going to be used. They involved, dem they, um, demonstrably showed that they do not have the capacity or education to know what is safe for our students and don't seem to be interested in learning. There continue to be a significant unsafe rigging practices happening in the facility. Some of these observed, some are reported by my children. These have not been addressed in any concrete way since I raised my concerns in mid-April. Due to my time constraints, I can't list all the safety violations I have witnessed and heard about. I did submit them to the board via email earlier today, and I have printouts available for anybody else in the room. But students have already been hit by falling set pieces, and the level of seriousness will only grow in magnitude if this is unchecked. The district is headed towards a traumatic brain injury or equally life-changing accident for one of its students, and all of the ramifications that will come with that in terms of responsibility and legality. I have professional experience in education the board does not, and I am raising the alarm so that you can make educated decisions about the operations of this program. I offer the following possible courses of action. At minimum, the counterweight system at the high school should be off limits to every one until further training can be completed to make sure it is being safely used. The district should retain an outside professional to complete a safety audit of the program and provides recommendations about further training and how things can be done better. Current adults supervising the program should be evaluated for their ability and knowledge of sa to safely fill their responsibilities. They then need to either undergo more training or to be replaced with appropriate candidates. The administration needs to provide more oversight of this program until confidence can be restored in the safety of our students and spectators. My own children who love theater will not be participating in this program until there are changes in the supervision. I will not risk their health or a serious injury due to callousness and callousness, and I hope that the board treats this matter with the seriousness it requires. Thank you. Yeah. I didn't give you my address. That's okay. That's why it's up here. Thank you. That's why I didn't go after you. I've got it. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. I need a motion and a second to approve the minutes for the April 20th, 2023 regular board meeting. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Please call the vote. Dr. Fisher? Yes. Mrs. Regano? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. And Mr. Stein? Yes. And we're at items for board discussion. Uh, yes, we have three items tonight for board discussion. Uh, first one is a change that we're looking to make on our volunteer background check update with a proposal of that change. Uh, Mr. Schwederman will cover that, and I'm going to ask Mr. Schwederman to cover the next item. Uh, we've had discussion with the board uh, in executive session, but we want to at least bring this to the forefront um, in regards to the position of supervisor of elementary and student support. That job description, so I'll ask Mr. Schwederman to kind of touch on that as well. 
Thank you, Mr. Otten. Board members, uh, in your packet this evening, on the left-hand side, you should have um, a draft proposal for a ch change in policy 31-2009. Uh, there's a corresponding policy 41-20.09. Uh, it's hard to see the change uh, because it's very small, um, if, but if you go to the section uh, just below A, B, and C, and then count to the one, two, third line, and approximately 70% of the way in, it's an uh, addition of a slash or. Um, and then the other change uh, being recommended uh, for your consideration is in the next paragraph as well, and that is an also add to and or. Um, if you may recall, uh, back in 2019, we brought uh, a policy change to you as we were engaging in the use of a vendor-provided service through uh, the Bureau of uh, Investigative Backgrounds, or Background Investigative Bureau, um, and we, it's an uh, online volunteer uh, system that we utilize where volunteers who are interested in working with our students in a regular capacity or an unsupervised capacity, uh, or as an example, an overnight field trip uh, or overnight competition where we have volunteers who are spending overnight with students and supervising students, or a volunteer that's coming in uh, on a regular basis and pulling a small group or individual student for academic support. Um, that those, the current policy says that they um, would be required to submit an extensive background check and provide a set of fingerprints. So uh, through the Bureau of Investigative Back Background and Bureau Investigative Bureau, the online vendor we utilize, it is actually a social security background check that our volunteers log in, provide their social security, and after using that product for the last three years, and we pay approximately $15 per background check for that investigative uh, service. Um, I receive back on each individual any record that they have, including speeding tickets and minor traffic um, misdemeanors. Um, a fingerprint system that we have, and we are required by law to fingerprint employees, uh, provides us with an FBI and BCI fingerprint background check. What BIB provides um, is is duplicated in the, the fingerprint background check. Um, there has only been, in the time we've been using both systems, uh, one time that I had an indication that what I received from BIB, it was different than what we received back from a fingerprint background check. Um, and what I received from BIB alerted me that there was something with this particular uh, volunteer that I would want to explore further anyway. Um, and the cost for the, for the fingerprints cost the district about um, is $48.75. Um, we do not charge volunteers uh, those, those charges. Um, and in an effort to um, maybe save a little bit of money, um, but also to um, lessen the hurdle for our volunteers who, who want to volunteer in our schools, um, I believe that continuing to utilize the vendor service and the social security background check um, will provide us with the necessary protections that we need for volunteers that might be spending the night or working one on one with our students. And so I would recommend to the board that you consider adding and or, which gives us the flexibility of saying, you know what, we're going to do the full fingerprint background check um, or depending on what the volunteer level is, um, but, but also continue to do the social security background check, which provides our volunteers with an ID card that allows them to volunteer in our schools. Um, I really think that that system is as extensive, if not more thorough, uh, than um, the fingerprint system that we utilize. Uh, fingerprints rely strictly on local jurisdictions self-reporting um, to uh, state agencies, where social security background check uh, actually goes to local agencies to collect the information. Uh, and that's the service that's provided at a much reduced cost for the district. So my recommendation is for you to think about it, ask me any questions, we'll bring it back for your consideration and vote in June. Okay, any questions right now? <clears throat> Does that include just field trip 
volunteers as well? Overnight field trip volunteers. Oh, but not regular right. one day. Yeah. Okay. A regular one day field trip where they're going, an adult is not one on one with a student, but might be with a group of students. Right. Uh, they're going uh, to Carillon Park as an right. example, and there are other adults in a supervised environment. Our, our current policy and our procedure allows an individual principal, based upon their knowledge of the field trip and what's occurring, to make the recommendation for the background check and fingerprints or not, okay. uh, based on our policy. So if it's a one-time one chaperone coming in for one event to go on a field trip where they're going to be supervised in a public setting, uh, the principal may decide that the volunteer acknowledging our policy, signing the volunteer release waiver is sufficient. Okay. Good Dar question. Darren, one of the, the situation you shared that the one incident that mm -hmm. caught something between the two, and I could be wrong on this, but wasn't that an error with uh, a different, like wasn't the individual had two different names or something, or, or I, am I incorrect on that? I, I'm, I don't want to say that you're incorrect, sir. That's but <laughs> but um, of course. I could, I I could go back and research that one. Same name, but different people. Yeah. I thought it was like a different middle name or something. Yeah. So, That's very possible. I could be thinking of something different. That's so. possible as well. Yeah. yeah, I could be wrong. You're allowed to say that. So. <laughs> <laughs> okay, and uh, thank you, Darren. Um, and if we, you can move on just to the uh, sure. job description. So there is a job description for board uh, discussion this evening, as Mr. Otten uh, described. Uh, we have begun the process of searching for um, a su supervisors, a new administrative position titled Supervisor of Elementary and Student Supports. This is the draft of the job description. Um, I feel it's pretty strong. Um, Dr. Fiore took uh, an extensive amount of time reviewing two current job descriptions that we have, special education supervisor and building principal, and identifying the characteristics of both of those job descriptions that would best serve this position in serving our elementary schools, um, as we have talked about in the past. And so this is an item of board discussion this evening for the board uh, to ask questions, uh, to give you some time between now and the next board meeting when we bring um, candidates to you for approval in the position. And if there are any questions about the policy, or not policy, but the job description, or any changes that we want to make between now and then, we're able to do that, and we'll bring it back for approval at the June board meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Uh, our next item is uh, oh. ask Mr. Sorry, to come and talk about the custodian job descriptions. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, members of the board. Uh, also in your notebook, you should have in the uh, pocket a draft of a job description for a lead custodian. Um, this is a position that is addressed in our current negotiated agreement. However, there is no job description for it, so it's time to get one put together. Um, and what you see in front of you as a draft is a combination or a blend between a head custodian and just a regular uh, custodian. So it is going to truly be a lead custodian. They're going to be below a head custodian, but they're going to be above a head custodian. This would be at the high school on second shift. Um, and current contract language addresses that already, that we can go ahead and implement this at the high school. Um, so the, the big gain for us is we have a point of contact on second shift at the high school. You all know how busy that building can be. Uh, we need someone that can take ownership and be stationed in the areas where the public and all of the after hours events are occurring. Someone that is going to be responsible to step up and make sure that everyone is taken care of and all those um, needs are met. Uh, so that's really the crux of what this position is for. Again, it is not a add of a position. It is a current position that would turn into a lead custodian. They would get an extra 25 cents on the hour um, and if you looked at that without any overtime, that's $520 across the full year. So the spend for the district is not very large, and I think the gain of having a point person on second shift at the high school is a huge gain. Um, so this is a job description for your review. We would bring this back next month for a vote to approve it. Um, if approved, we would look to start this position July 1st. So with that, any questions right now for me? Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
that concludes on support discussion. Okay, we're into financial reports. And I'm going to need a motion and a second to approve the following. The approval of the five-year forecast for the period ending June 30th, 2023 through June 30th, 2027. April 2023, financial reports, fiscal year 23, amended certificate of estimated resources and appropriations. April 2023, donated items. Approval of pay schools proposal. Approval of frontline renewal notice and approval of Admentum subscription. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Yes. Real quickly. Um, so typically, five year forecast, I would be standing up here and making a presentation with a PowerPoint like I did in November. Mm -hmm. um, but at this time of year, um, what you're doing with your May forecast is you're updating that November forecast. Okay. Unfortunately, um, at this time, there are a lot of unknowns for this, for this forecast at this time period. Um, on the revenue side, the biennial budget at the state level has not been approved, so I don't know what additional funding or decrease in funding at this point that we would be receiving. Um, as for the real estate portion, the county just underwent a countywide reappraisal. And so we don't know how that's coming in yet. When I talked to David two days ago, the county auditor, he had just sent the abstract to the Ohio Department of Taxation. That has not been approved one way or the other as of yet, so we don't know what that percentage is. And then on the expense side, um, the unknown is both salaries and benefits for the next three years because we are under contract negotiations with both of our unions because our collective bargaining agreements have expired as of June 30th of this year. So a lot of unknowns. And so I really didn't think with that many unknowns and the financial impact of such major dollar figures that it would be a good use of Board of Ed time, you know, meeting time for me to stand up here and make a presentation. Um, with that said though, there are a few knowns that I do know and that changes that I have made to the five-year forecast. On the, um, on the side of the personal services, which is salaries, I added an additional four supervisors um, starting next year to account for what Mr. Schwederman was just talking about, the three new supervisors of elementary and student support positions and one new curriculum supervisor here at the Board of Ed. Um, our operating transfers out, I added a transfer equal to 1% of the regular base salaries to fund the new severance fund that was approved by the board in the fall when I brought that to you and I wanted to open up that new severance fund in order to be putting money aside for severances as they're happening. Um, so we'll have a, a fund for that. And then on the, um, the additional 750,000 estimated at this time for FY 25, 26 and 27 fiscal years um, for the real estate taxes based on new construction estimates for the substitute levy that was passed May 2nd. So all of that is in there. Um, and so also, I did want to bring up, and, and first, is there any questions right now on the five-year forecast? Are we, you know, okay, okay. So based on the additional dollars that, you know, will be collected from the substitute levy that was just passed on May 2nd, I would like to suggest to the board um, a renewal of the 18.5 mil levy as a substitute levy this November coming up. Um, in order to collect the additional dollars from new construction and at the same time recognizing that this would mean no new taxes for our current homeowners. They would be held harmless. Um, by taking this step, I'm hoping to push off a new levy to 2026 instead of 2025, you know, in the hopes of collecting those new dollars. Um, this will also sync the cycle of the levy that we just passed with that levy and so hopefully um, it would stem some of the levy fatigue both for the board and for the community um, because they would be together then on the same renewal cycle um, for that five-year period so would, they would both start collecting January of 2024. Along with this substitute levy I would also like to renew the PI levy in November at the same time in order to save the cost of putting an item on the ballot. 
So the substitute levy would start collecting January 2024, this January coming up, whereas the PI levy would be renewed, but it wouldn't start collecting until January 2025. Um, so in order to do this, I would need to bring a resolution of necessity in June, a resolution to proceed in July. Um, I encourage you to think about my suggestion. Let me know of any, any you know, thoughts, feelings, you know, anything that you might feel at this time. Um, and like I said, that would not be coming to you until June, so a month from now. So um, the other thing, the April 2023 financial reports do not reflect the five-year forecast at this time. I'll make that adjustment for the May financial reports that I'll be bringing to you in June. So are there any questions? What was the amount for the PI levy again? I'm sorry. How many? 18. Go ahead. Oh, the PI levy would oh, be a little bit over 900000 Okay. Yeah, it's the voted PI levy. It's not the inside millage, of course. That one's a non-voted, so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I just want to uh, take a crack at clarifying, because this is something I struggled with, and, and Joy helped me make sure I can, could get it straight. But for folks who don't follow all the details about the levies, one of the challenges of an emergency levy is that it fixes a dollar amount, yes. which means that as our community grows and we have more children to educate, we don't bring in any more dollars on that levy. And by switching to a substitute levy, new construction increases the dollar amount, which just allows us to keep a more consistent per pupil funding level. Yes. And I wanted to say that out loud and make sure Joy's head was nodding in the right direction uh, and just make sure folks are tracking the distinction because it's a subtle distinction, but an important one for a growing oh, community like Beaver Creek to understand that um, emergency levies, as we've been doing them, effectively squeeze our dollar amount as our community grows. We have less and less money per pupil as yes. more houses are built. Um, and so to me, this is, a, I think, a smart, a smart move, so. All right, thank you. Thanks. Thank you. <clears throat> Any other discussion? Okay, please call the vote. Mrs. Hunt? Yes. Mrs. Regano? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Stein? Yes. And Dr. Fisher? Yes. Okay, we're into new business, and I'm going to need a motion and a second to approve the employment, salary changes, leave of absence and terminations, approval of the Beaver Creek High School graduating class of 2023. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Uh, yes. <laughs> uh, just a couple things. First of all, I would like to uh, just direct the uh, direct your attention towards the back of your uh, of your book here. I believe starting on uh, page seventy-four, maybe seventy-six. Um, my math serves me correct. That is six hundred thirty-eight seniors. Um, that will be graduating Saturday night. And um, always a, a great experience. I don't, I, since I've been here, we've not had an evening one like this, so it'll be kind of interesting to see a graduation that's that late in the evening. Um, but I would like to really give, uh, I guess, props to our high school administration <coughs> as they have worked diligently, really um, probably over the past I'd say four months focusing on uh, the graduation um, of our students. So pretty exciting time. I know our board will all be there, so we're, we're very excited to have you up there in the front row, and you get a front row seat to watch these kids walk across and see their dreams come true as they uh, graduate from high school. So very exciting. Um, and that concludes uh, my items. Okay, please call the vote. Mrs. Organo? Yes. Mr. Taylor? Yes. Mr. Stein? Yes. Dr. Fisher? Yes. And Mrs. Hunt? Yes. Thank you. And we're to announcements. May 20th is Beaver Creek High School class of 2023 graduation at the Nutter Center at 7 p.m. May 25th is the last day for students. There's a one hour early dismissal. May 29th is Memorial Day holiday and all offices are closed. And the next Board of Education meeting is at 6.30, right here on June 15th. And we're into board comments. Mrs. Hine. Uh, first, let me apologize for my tardiness. I was attending my son's tennis banquet where he got his first varsity letter. So tonight I had to pick mom over board member just for an hour. So thank you for allowing me to be there. 
Um, excited for graduation this weekend. Kind of, it'll be sort of a relief if, if I have a senior. So, um, Ms. Dr. Fisher can probably sympathize. There's a lot going on if we have yes. seniors. Um, and uh, wanted to congratulate our sports teams for finishing their season strong. We still have a couple of our teams that are in postseason play. And I believe our girls lacrosse team won again tonight, if I heard correctly, um, over Dublin Jerome. I don't know if I, I saw the updates earlier. They were up by 10. So they will continue on in postseason play. And our uh, track team is still has a group of kids that are uh, participating in districts this week. So wishing them luck. Uh, our boys tennis team had three gentlemen who qualified for districts, unfortunately fell today to some really strong opponents. But um, two of those were sophomores. So strong showing mm -hmm. for young teams. So it's exciting for what's to come. Uh, and I'm sorry I missed the recognitions for retirees, but um, glad to get to do that for them tonight. Okay, thanks. Dr. Taylor. I mean, Fisher. Fisher. I'm looking at him. I know, she was I'm talking at him. to you. Like, you know, I'm sorry. That's all right. That's all right. I shouldn't look at one person and call another. It's, it's, been, it's been a long day. Dr. Fisher. Yes, thank you. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll echo uh, what Ms. Hunt said is that it's an incredibly busy time for parents, myself included. It's been a bit of a roller coaster for the last couple months uh, with year end banquets, concerts, the show choir finale, graduation parties, and planning as myself with a senior as well. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's just been a bit of a roller coaster. Hold on tight and try to get through it. Um, I did want to say one exciting thing that's happened, and I know many of you on the board have heard me say this before, but I can't help but repeat that uh, VEX Robotics Championship, we had worlds since our last meeting, um, where f over 480 international teams from all around the world came to compete in middle school robotics. Um, and my, the stat I'm most incredibly proud of is that Beaver Creek sent 11 teams, and only one other city sent 11 teams, and that was Shanghai, China, a city of... 25 million people, right? They're the only other city in the world that sent that many teams. So Beaver Creek, with our 50,000 citizens, uh, sent 11 robotics teams. So I am so proud of that fact. Um, our teams also brought home three national level awards. Um, the team called The Chosen Ones won a design award. Emotional Damage won the Innovate Award. And Zero Gravity won the Inspire Award. Um, several teams made it through their divisions to the playoffs um, and competed at the playoff uh, level at a national scale. Um, it was just such an exciting uh, set of events and activities uh, and so much fun to go see um, and really great to see our, our kids competing at something like that. Um, and that's all I had uh, in terms of announcements. So I can't imagine how exciting it was to be there. It was so neat. It was so cool. It was really neat. I had a great time, too. We've got to be <laughs> proud of our beavers. Absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Okay, now I am not going to call you anything else. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Thank you. Um, I always enjoy the retirement recognitions and just hearing the amazing stories of our, uh, of our staff members when they're retiring. And tonight did not disappoint. So I'm very glad that we were able to all be here for that and hear the amazing educators that we have in our schools. And um, I can't believe it's the end of the school year. Um, everyone have a great summer. It's hard to believe the school it's, year is yeah. over. <laughs> it is hard to believe. It's wild. Okay, Mr. Taylor. All right, my turn. Great. Uh, first off, I've been just, uh, the retirements are so bittersweet. Uh, having been an educator here in Beaver Creek and been in that position before to stand up, and the emotions that come back, it's all of a sudden a sense of finality. And um, I think one of, the, one of the retirees said that um, in her head she's there for retirement, but in her heart she's not. And that has always been true with me, uh, that I've never left the process of education just ask the guys that work for me. It never ends. They tell me to go home when I start down that road. But um, certainly uh, a sense of legacy, a sense of having impact on uh, lives of other people, a sense of compassion, uh, a sense of emotion from you know, the recipients was just uh, 
outstanding. I think this was my most emotional one that, I, that I've seen. And it just really touched me uh, in the process of that. Uh, other than that, graduation is on our way. Another example of, of us and our legacy and moving uh, on down the line so somebody else gets a chance to uh, improve their lives uh, with the kids. And it's also very exciting. I know the parents of uh, kids that are graduating are now what? So it just is an exciting time. Uh, just to mention the Greene County Career Center, and I kind of mentioned this last, last time, that uh, the Career Center is uh, developing programs for elementary school. And this is one of them right here. There's a hat for that. And this is for kindergartners. It's a, a picture book. And just one of them here. Whoops. Just one of them here. I could love numbers and getting things right. I'll solve crazy problems and do the math at night. Or I might find that I want to be feel free. I'll start my own business and I'll work for me. <laughs> oh, there you go. You, that, you can get that one. <laughs> yeah, I, got the, I know that one well, real well. Uh, this is for the second grade, by the way, these are developed uh, in-house and self-published by our, by our teams there at uh, the Career Center. So this is a workbook, basically, in our uh, famous culinary department, if you've never been mm -hmm. out and enjoyed the uh, fruits of our culinary department. So we've got a picture of a cupcake. I don't know how the cupcake lines up with uh, the recipe, but the recipe is, thank you, is for Rice Krispies treats. So when they that finish their good. workbook, they'll have all kinds of um, cool things that they can do at home. Uh, and our fourth grade, I mentioned before, uh, read the story of uh, the three little pigs from the wolf's perspective. And they're given a series of materials in their class, and the little, the little box that has straw and wood and, and bricks in it or stones in it, and they're tasked with building some little structures, and then they test them with water and they test them with a the hairdryer to see if they blow over. So very exciting stuff. It's a very uh, direct impact, hands-on learning, and that's kind of what we're all about at, at the Career Center. And Career Center parents are all excited. We have uh, juniors and seniors, and the parents are like, you know what? You know what I want out of the Career Center? I want my kid to have a job <laughs> and move on, have the skill set uh, and the uh, education to also do those things. So we're very excited there. I'm just really excited about Beaver Creek uh, finishing up another year and if you've been a teacher and been through that whole uh, basically nine months of working with a, a classroom and how excited it is to send them on, on. So there you go. That's it for me. It's also hard to give them up. Absolutely. That was a killer. Yeah. I mean, because I felt they were all mine. That's right. <laughs> and then I had to give them up to somebody else. I'm like, no. <laughs> that is, that, because they become your family. They Absolutely. really do. It's like, that is hard. Mm -hmm. um, it has been such an exciting couple of weeks. I think I've been all over the district. <laughs> the preschool, okay, so the dance-a-thon tonight was amazing. The day I was there was incredible. And as I'm walking through the hallway, you hear on the announcements, it's time to dance. I'm like, oh, it's another 15 minutes. <laughs> or if you're in the gym, they're all, one of the classes that came in, was dressed like flower children. It was priceless. And the teacher looked like a flower child. And one of the kids looked just like her with the headband with flowers, <laughs> the bell-bottom pants. And, they, and you could see them tonight. They were just dancing away. It was, and today I went to the air, fun in the Sunday. Actually, this morning it was like fun in winter. Just, it was cold. But the best was 
their car wash. They have these little cars there that they drive in. But they're, so the teachers painted the cars with dirt and these kids are washing these cars. And if they would have had an open space, I would have driven my SUV through there. They could have washed that. You know, and, they, and the teacher said, well, then only could get to the baseboard. I right. said, my level. So it would have been easy. I mean, I could get that, but they were so cute. And one of the kids was so into washing the car and the class was going in and Christine, the principal said, I think your class is going in. I'm not going. <laughs> okay. I mean, she was having a good time. I mean, she went in, but it was so cute. And I went to visit the classrooms, and they're having snacks. And I went to one class, and I walked in. This one kid yells, I'm five. And this other kid goes, I'm three. <laughs> I mean, they are so, you know what? I call the preschool my happy place. So if you're having a bad day, just go to the, you can't help but be happy when you leave there. I mean, so I call it the happy place. Um, all the concerts this year, the end of the year concerts, were amazing. They were just, they were really amazing. I went to the Beaver Creek High School Art Show. Okay, the talent there is beyond, I don't even know how to explain it. So they had this mixed media, and I'm like bending down, my head's almost on the table, and somebody says, no, that's not a real orange. Biscuits cut in half. I'm telling you, I thought they freeze dry it, but it was a whole table of food hmm. and the pizza, but the orange looked real. And I'm thinking, when the person said, no, it's not real, I'm like, okay. <laughs> and their etchings, because I'm not an art person, this really, but the paint, well, the etching looked like you could touch the fur on the animal. Okay, how do they do this? Seriously, how do they even know where to, I mean, they're, they're wonderful, and I'm, and so I've got to tell you, the Friends final concert was a killer, and I just got an email from one of the kids tonight that said, I will miss seeing you in the audience every year, I'm like, Aww. I mean, that was like, I didn't even have this kid in my class, <laughs> so I mean, they're just special kids, and I have to finish this off with, I was at Shaw this week. That was a tearjerker, so you walk in. And I happened to be there, this was just, the preschoolers were there visiting, you know, because they're gonna be kindergartners next year. And you walked in, it said, welcome class of 2036. Oh my gosh. And then next to it, it said, and congratulations class of 2023. And of course, I'm crying. <laughs> and then the best was, one of the parents with her little preschooler said, Mrs. Regano, I was in your third grade class. <laughs> okay. Uh, and she said, I wasn't sure if you wanted me to say, I said, oh, I'm glad you said something. But it was, so, it was so adorable. And I ended up at their international day. And you know, I've always said we're known all over the United States. Okay, we really are because when I was teaching, I'm not, it wasn't about me, but my husband's cousins taught in New York in Westchester County. And I got a call from one of them and she said, we were at a professional development day and they were talking about innovative school districts and Beaver Creek City Schools from Ohio comes up in the presentation. Hmm. And I'm like, okay. But now we're known worldwide and I can prove it to you. Because at International Day, I would like to show you a video from the governor of Puerto Rico talking about Beaver Creek City Schools. Hit it. <laughs> Hello everyone, I am Pedro Pierluisi, the governor of Puerto Rico. I am super excited to know that my friends Alex and Aiden's school is interested in learning about our beautiful island, Puerto Rico. I invite all of you to visit us. We have warm beaches, beautiful mountains, great food, music, history and culture, and most importantly, wonderful people. Alex and Aiden. The entire island is very proud of you. I am sure you bring Ohio some of the Caribbean sun we enjoy here. Like your mom, you will always be Boricua. Keep up the good work in school, and I hope all of you enjoy the presentation. My best wishes always. God bless you all. Un abrazo. Is that not amazing? I mean, look like, okay, so go Beaver Creek. And with that, I hope all our teachers 
and every staff member has the most wonderful, relaxing summer because they have earned it. They go above and beyond every single day of the year for our kids, and there can never be enough words of thanks for every single person that works in this school district. I sincerely mean this from the bottom of my heart, and I know I speak for the board. So with that, I need a motion and a second to go into executive session for the appointment, employment, dismissal, discipline, promotion, demotion, or compensation of public employees, ORC 121.22 G1, and for collective bargaining, 121.22 G4. Second. And that's it. Thank you.